The royal family's most controversial friendships are under the spotlight. From sex offenders to dictators, these associations have caused more than just public outrage. In 2019, rumors swirled that Prince William was having an affair with Rose Hanbury, the Marchioness of Chumley. The fact that Hanbury is a family friend made these rumors all the more scandalous and damaging. In Touch magazine first ran with the story, alleging that there was enough substance to the rumor that Princess Catherine confronted him about it. William reportedly brushed it off, saying that it was nonsense, but since an official statement was never released, the rumors still haven't been put to rest. The gossip account Dumois posted a message it received from an anonymous source who claimed that William's affair is common knowledge in London's higher circles, and that Catherine is well aware of it. Of course, anonymous sources can't always be trusted, and in an article Richard K. wrote for the Daily Mail, he insists that it was all fake news, stating the reports about Catherine, William, and Hanbury having a falling out were nonsense. He added that all parties involved contemplated taking legal action against tabloids publishing stories about the rumored affair, but decided against it because even though the articles were pretty damaging, none of them cited substantial evidence to support their claims. The damage is done, however, and the royals will likely not be seen getting too cozy with Hanbury in the near future. If you're even slightly interested in the royal family, you would know that Prince Andrew used to be friends with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. This wasn't a good look for Andrew, and it certainly did not reflect well on the royal family. Andrew was even implicated in some of the allegations that were made against Epstein, even though he denied all of them. In 2022, after failing to make the sex abuse lawsuit against him go away, the palace announced that the prince had been stripped of his royal and military titles. What followed was a disastrous interview with BBC, where Andrew discussed his lengthy friendship with Epstein, which began in 1999 and saw the two men attending several high-profile events together. It wasn't all business, however, and in the early 2000s, Epstein and Andrew were spotted holidaying on a yacht, surrounded by several young, topless women, as detailed by The Guardian. During the infamous BBC interview, the presenter, Emily Maitlis, asked Andrew if he was regretful of his friendship with Epstein, to which Andrew replied, now, uh, still not. He also said that Epstein conducted himself in a manner unbecoming. Unbecoming? He was a sex offender? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm being polite. I'm in the sense that he was a sex offender. His lack of obvious concern for Epstein's victims was incredibly damaging. The interview evoked a slew of bad publicity that was so overwhelming that Andrew stepped back from his public duties four days after it aired. Like Prince Andrew, King Charles III was also friends with a sex offender. Jimmy Savile, described as one of Britain's most prolific sex offenders, was close friends with Charles, as reported by GB News. While we're pretty sure that Jimmy Savile is a name Charles would now rather forget, the Netflix documentary, Jimmy Savile, A British Horror Story, again brought up the subject of their friendship. Speaking to Times Radio, Rowan Deakin, who directed the documentary, explained that they used the project to better understand the relationship that Charles had with Savile. The two friends wrote each other letters throughout their 20-year friendship, the contents of which usually consisted of discussions on how Charles should handle tricky family or public situations. According to The Guardian, Charles put so much faith in Savile that he eventually became somewhat of an unofficial advisor to the prince. Deacon says the reason Savile was never convicted was because Charles trusted and respected him. Deacon also insists that the documentary isn't suggesting that Charles knew of Savile's heinous crimes while they were friends. When it came to light in 2019 that Prince Andrew invited convicted sex offenders Harvey Weinstein, Ghislaine Maxwell, and Jeffrey Epstein to his daughter, Princess Beatrice's 18th birthday party in 2006, he came under fire once again for his poor choice of friends. Ghislaine Maxwell was involved with Jeffrey Epstein, and both were found guilty of sex trafficking. Harvey Weinstein is serving time in prison for similar crimes, as he was found guilty on multiple accounts of rape and sexual assault in the film industry. Needless to say, the photograph of the three sex offenders at Beatrice's party making a comeback wasn't a good look for Andrew. Even though it was taken years ago, it was proof that he was good friends with these people. Way back in 1937, while King Edward VIII, who was by then demoted to the Duke of Windsor, and his wife Wallace Simpson were paying a visit to Germany, Edward wrote a letter to Hitler to thank him for his hospitality and the beautiful hours he and Wallace spent with him at his Berghoff vacation home. This letter was unearthed from the Royal Archives by historian Alexander Larman, who told the Mirror that its contents proved that Edward was a fascist, stating, "...if he hadn't been the king, I am sure he would have gone to prison. He was a Nazi sympathizer to the extent that it complicated his loyalty." 
penalties. His actions, at worst, were purely treasonous. What's even worse is that Edward reportedly fraternized with various senior Nazis and even visited one of their concentration camps, according to the Daily Mail. He also reportedly once said that Hitler was not a bad chap. Even though Edward seemed to be a fan of Hitler, the rest of the royal family wasn't. Larman says that they didn't agree with Edward's visit to the country, especially not within the first year of Edward's brother King George VI's reign. 